The arrival of the traveling carnival marked the highlight of the spring festival in our small town. For weeks, colorful posters adorned with whimsical illustrations had teased us with promises of thrilling rides, delectable treats, and captivating performances. Excitement buzzed in the air as families eagerly awaited the opening night, eager to indulge in the festivities that had become a cherished tradition. As the sun dipped below the horizon on the eve of the carnival's grand opening, the atmosphere shifted, imbued with an undercurrent of anticipation tinged with apprehension. There was something about the arrival of the carnival that sparked a sense of unease, a feeling that lingered in the shadows cast by the towering Ferris wheel and the flickering lights of the Midway Games. Despite the growing sense of foreboding, the townsfolk flocked to the carnival grounds, drawn by the promise of thrills and excitement. Laughter and chatter filled the air as children raced from one attraction to the next, their faces illuminated by the warm glow of neon lights and flashing signs. But as night fell and the carnival came alive with the buzz of activity, a palpable tension settled over the grounds. Visitors whispered of unsettling sights, a ghostly figure that seemed to materialize out of thin air, a haunting melody that drifted from the abandoned funhouse and rumors of strange disappearances among the carnival workers. I too felt the hairs on the back of my neck prickle with unease as I wandered through the maze of attractions, my senses on high alert for any sign of danger. The air was heavy with the scent of cotton candy and popcorn, but beneath the saccharine sweetness lingered a faint undercurrent of something darker, something sinister. As I made my way through the carnival, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, a sensation that grew more pronounced with each passing moment. Shadows danced at the edges of my vision, and strange whispers seemed to echo through the night, their source impossible to pinpoint. It was then that I caught sight of her, a young girl, her pale face illuminated by the flickering lights of the carousel. She stood alone in the darkness, her eyes fixed on the swirling colors before her, a haunting stillness enveloping her slender frame. Curiosity peaked, I approached her cautiously, my footsteps muffled by the soft crunch of gravel beneath my feet. Are you okay? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. The girl turned to face me, her expression unreadable in the faint light. I'm fine, she replied, her voice soft and ethereal. But you shouldn't be here. Not tonight. Confusion knitted my brow as I regarded her, unsure of what to make of her cryptic words. Before I could respond, she vanished into the night, leaving me standing alone in the empty expanse of the carnival grounds. Shaken but determined to uncover the truth, I pressed on my footsteps quickening as I made my way towards the abandoned funhouse, the epicenter of the strange occurrences that had plagued the carnival in recent days. The funhouse loomed before me, its faded facade bathed in the eerie glow of the moonlight. The air was thick with an oppressive silence, broken only by the faint strains of music that drifted from within. Summoning my courage, I pushed open the creaking door and stepped into the darkness beyond. The air was heavy with the scent of mildew and decay, and I wrinkled my nose in disgust as I navigated the maze of corridors and passageways. With each step, the music grew louder, its haunting melody weaving through the empty halls like a siren's call. I followed its source, my heart pounding in my chest as I rounded a corner and came face to face with the source of the disturbance. There in the center of the room stood a solitary figure, a clown, his painted smile frozen in a grotesque grin. His eyes bore into mine with an intensity that froze me in my place, and I recoiled in horror as I realized the truth. The clown was not alone. Lining the walls of the room were rows upon rows of mannequins, their lifeless eyes staring blankly into the abyss. Each one was dressed in tattered carnival attire, their painted faces frozen in expressions of eternal torment. As the realization dawned on me, a wave of nausea washed over me threatening to engulf me in its suffocating embrace. I stumbled backwards, my mind reeling with horror as I struggled to comprehend the magnitude of what I had stumbled upon. But before I could react, a voice cut through the darkness, a voice so evil I started to panic. Well, 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 it hissed, its tone dripping with malice. It seems we have an uninvited guest. I turned to face the source of the voice, my heart hammering in my chest as I prepared to confront the sinister figure that lurked in the shadows. And there, standing before me, was the ringleader of the carnival, a man whose twisted smile and malevolent gaze sent a chill down my spine. He regarded me with amusement, 
his eyes gleaming with a hunger that sent alarm bells ringing in my mind. Welcome to the show, he said, his voice a sinister whisper that echoed through the empty halls. I do hope you enjoy your stay. With that, he vanished into the darkness, leaving me alone with the eerie silence of the funhouse and the unsettling presence of the mannequins that lined its walls. As I stood there paralyzed with fear, I knew that I had stumbled upon something far more sinister than I could have ever imagined. The carnival was not what it seemed, and its dark secrets threatened to consume me whole. But as I turned to flee the nightmarish spectacle that lay before me, I knew that escape would not come easy. For in the heart of the carnival, evil lurked in the shadows, waiting patiently for its next victim to fall prey to its sinister machinations. And as I ran into the night, the echoing laughter of the carnival rang in my ears, a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked just beyond the surface of our everyday world. Story 2 Spring had arrived, bringing with it a sense of new beginnings for the Peterson family as they settled into their new home on the outskirts of town. Excitement buzzed in the air as they unpacked boxes and arranged furniture, eager to make the house their own. But as the days grew longer and warmer, a shadow fell over their joy. A shadow that lurked in the forgotten corners of their new abode, waiting to be unearthed. With the promise of warmer weather came the inevitable task of spring cleaning and the Petersons wasted no time in rolling up their sleeves and diving into the work. Armed with dust cloths and brooms, they set to work scrubbing floors, dusting shelves and clearing out the clutter that had accumulated over the years. As they worked their way through the house, the Petersons couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation building within them. There was something thrilling about the idea of uncovering hidden treasures and forgotten secrets as they delved into the depths of their new home. It was on a bright Saturday morning that they decided to tackle the attic, a space that had been left untouched since they had moved in. With flashlights in hand, they climbed the creaky stairs and pushed open the attic door, revealing a treasure trove of forgotten belongings. Boxes upon boxes filled the space, each one containing a piece of the house's history waiting to be rediscovered. Old furniture, moth-eaten clothes, and dusty books lined the walls, hinting at the lives of those who had come before. But as the Petersons sifted through the items, they soon realized that not everything was as innocuous as it seemed. Buried beneath a pile of old blankets, Sarah, the matriarch of the family, uncovered a series of photographs. The images depicted scenes of unimaginable horror, blood-stained floors, broken furniture, and shadowy figures lurking in the background. Confused and disturbed, Sarah showed the photographs to her husband, David, and their teenage son, Michael. Together, they tried to make sense of the grisly scenes before them. But the more they looked, the more questions arose. Who had taken these photographs? And more importantly, what had happened in their new home to warrant such macabre images? Determined to unravel the mystery, the Petersons set out to learn more about the history of their house. They scoured old newspapers and archives, searching for any mention of the events depicted in the photographs. But as they delved deeper, they soon realized that the truth was far more sinister than they could have ever imagined. According to the records they uncovered, their house had once been the site of a series of unsolved murders, a fact that made their blood turn cold. The victims, it seemed, had been brutally slain in their own home, their deaths leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and lingering suspicions. As the Petersons continued their investigation, they began to experience strange occurrences within the walls of their new home. Doors slammed shut of their own accord, objects moved inexplicably from one place to another, and whispers echoed through the empty hallways in the dead of night. Fearing for their safety, the Petersons reached out to local authorities, hoping for answers and reassurance. But to their dismay, they found little solace in the responses they received. The police dismissed their claims as mere superstition, urging them to focus on the present rather than dwelling on the past. Determined to protect their family, the Petersons took matters into their own hands, installing security cameras and alarms throughout the house. But no amount of technology could shake the feeling of unease that hung over them like a dark cloud, threatening to engulf them at any moment. As the days turned into weeks, the Petersons struggled to maintain a sense of normalcy amidst the growing sense of dread that pervaded their lives. Each night brought new terrors, strange noises, 
inexplicable shadows and a feeling of being watched that never seemed to dissipate. Desperate for answers, David delved deeper into the history of the house, determined to uncover the truth at any cost. But the more he uncovered, the more he realized that some secrets were meant to stay buried, secrets that threatened to tear their family apart. One fateful night, as a violent storm raged outside, the Petersons received an unexpected visitor, a man claiming to be a descendant of the previous owners of the house. His arrival sent shockwaves through the family, stirring up long-buried memories and forgotten fears. As the man revealed the dark history of their home, the Petersons listened in horror, realizing the true extent of the evil that lurked within its walls. The murders, he explained, had been the work of a deranged serial killer, a man who had once lived in the very house they now called home. With each passing moment, the storm outside grew fiercer, its fury mirroring the chaos that threatened to consume them all. And as the man finished his tale, a deafening silence descended upon the room, broken only by the sound of their own ragged breathing. In that moment, the Petersons knew that they could no longer deny the truth. They were not alone in their new home, and the darkness that had haunted them from the start was far more than just a figment of their imagination. As the storm raged on outside, the Petersons huddled together in the faded room, their hearts heavy with the weight of the knowledge they had gained. And as they listened to the wind howl and the rain pound against the windows, they knew that their fight was far from over, that the sinister forces that lurked within their home would stop at nothing to claim their souls. Story 3 The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a golden hue over the sprawling forest as our family arrived at the secluded campground nestled deep within its embrace. Excitement bubbled within us as we unloaded our gear from the car, eager to escape the hustle and bustle of city life and immerse ourselves in the tranquility of nature. The campground was a picturesque oasis, with towering trees casting dappled shadows over the forest floor and a crystal-clear stream meandering through the landscape. Birds chirped merrily in the treetops, their melodic song serving as a welcome symphony to our ears as we set up camp beneath the canopy of branches. As the day gave way to night, we gathered around the crackling campfire, roasting marshmallows and swapping stories beneath the star-studded sky. The air was crisp with the promise of spring, and a sense of contentment settled over our makeshift campsite as we reveled in the simple joys of nature. But as darkness descended upon the forest and the campfire dwindled to embers, a subtle shift occurred in the atmosphere, a whisper of unease that prickled at the edges of our consciousness. Unexplained noises echoed through the trees, their source elusive and unnerving, while shadowy figures flitted at the edge of our vision, disappearing as quickly as they appeared. At first, we dismissed the strange occurrences as figments of our imagination, chalking them up to the unfamiliarity of our surroundings and the tricks of the mind brought on by the darkness of the forest. But as the night wore on and the disturbances grew more pronounced, we could no longer ignore the palpable sense of unease that hung heavy in the air. Tension simmered beneath the surface as we huddled together in our tent, the fabric offering little protection against the eerie presence that seemed to lurk just beyond our campsite. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig sent a jolt of fear coursing through our veins, and we clung to each other tightly, seeking solace in our shared apprehension. As the hours passed and sleep eluded us, we found ourselves ensnared in a relentless cycle of fear and paranoia, each shadow cast by the moonlight morphing into a sinister threat in our overactive imaginations. The forest, once a symbol of serenity and natural beauty, now loomed ominously around us, its towering trees casting long, menacing shadows over our fragile sanctuary. With the dawn came a tentative sense of relief, the first rays of sunlight banishing the darkness and dispelling the lingering specter of fear that had gripped us throughout the night. We emerged from our tent, bleary-eyed and exhausted, the events of the previous evening still fresh in our minds as we surveyed the campground with trepidation. But as we began to pack up our belongings and prepare to leave the haunted campground behind, a sense of dread settled over us like a suffocating blanket, suffusing the air with an oppressive weight that seemed to defy explanation. It was as though the forest itself was reluctant to release us from its clutches, clinging to us with a tenacity that I'd never felt before. As we trudged along the winding forest trail, our footsteps echoing in the silence of the early morning, we couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. 
that unseen eyes followed our every move from the shadows, their gaze filled with malevolent intent. We quickened our pace, the sense of foreboding growing more pronounced with each passing moment, until we were practically running through the underbrush in our haste to escape. But just as we reached the edge of the forest and the safety of the open road beckoned in the distance, a bone-chilling scream pierced the air, freezing us in our tracks. We turned as one, our hearts pounding in our chests to see a shadowy figure emerge from the depths of the forest. A spectral apparition with hollow eyes and an ethereal aura. Panic gripped us as we stared in horror at the ghostly figure that stood before us, its presence casting a pall of dread over the campground. In that moment we realized the true nature of the strange occurrences that had plagued us throughout the night, that we were not alone in the woods, and that the spirits of the forest would not easily relinquish their hold on our souls. With a primal instinct born of fear, we turned and fled, our footsteps pounding against the forest floor as we raced towards the safety of civilization. Behind us, the haunting wail of the forest echoed in our ears, a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked within its depths. And as we emerged from the shadowy embrace of the trees, we vowed never to return to the haunted campground again, lest we become lost forever in its malevolent embrace. The haunted campground was a place we would never forget, its memory lingering in our minds like a ghostly whisper on the wind. Though we had escaped with our lives, we knew that the darkness of the forest would haunt us forever, a reminder of the fragility of human existence in the face of the unknown. Story 4 the spring sun cast a golden hue over the rugged peaks of the mountains as our group of friends geared up for our much-anticipated hike. Excitement crackled in the air as we tightened our bootlaces and adjusted our backpacks, eager to explore the wilderness that beckoned beyond the tree line. Our crew consisted of five adventure enthusiasts. Sarah, the nature lover with an insatiable wanderlust. Mike, the seasoned outdoorsman with an impeccable sense of direction. Emily, the photographer armed with her trusty camera, Jack, the joker whose laughter echoed through the valleys, and me, Alex, the planner who organized the expedition. We set out from the trailhead with high spirits and lofty ambitions, following a well-worn path that meandered through lush meadows and dense pine forests. The air was crisp, infused with the scent of pine needles and wildflowers, and the sound of birdsong filled our ears as we ventured deeper into the heart of the wilderness. As we hiked, our conversation ebbed and flowed, punctuated by bursts of laughter and exclamations of awe at the breathtaking vistas that unfolded before us. Time seemed to lose its meaning as we immersed ourselves in the beauty of nature, each step bringing us closer to the unknown. It was mid-afternoon when we stumbled upon an unexpected sight, a weathered signpost adorned with faded markings that indicated the presence of a trail we had never heard of. Intrigued by the mystery of the uncharted path, Curiosity gripped us, and we found ourselves debating whether to follow it or stick to our original route. After a brief discussion, we unanimously decided to veer off course and explore the unknown trail, fueled by a sense of adventure and the promise of discovering something new. With Mike leading the way, we ventured into the dense undergrowth, the foliage closing in around us like a verdant embrace. The trail wound its way through dense thickets and rocky outcrops, leading us deeper into the heart of the mountains with each passing step. The terrain grew increasingly rugged, and the sunlight waned, casting long shadows across our path as evening approached. Despite our growing sense of unease, we pressed on, driven by a combination of excitement and trepidation. The forest around us seemed to come alive with whispered secrets, and the air grew heavy with an otherworldly stillness. As darkness descended upon the mountains, we realized with a sinking feeling that we had lost our way. Panic threatened to take hold as we frantically searched for familiar landmarks, but the dense foliage obscured our view, leaving us disoriented and vulnerable in the gathering gloom. It was then that we heard it, a faint cry echoing through the night carried on the chill mountain breeze. Heart pounding, we followed the sound, our footsteps quickening as we raced against time to locate the source of the desperate plea. After what felt like an eternity of stumbling through the darkness, we stumbled upon a clearing bathed in moonlight, where we found Emily kneeling beside a fallen figure, her hands trembling as she attempted to staunch the blood that flowed from a gash on their forehead. With a sense of relief, we gathered around our fallen comrade, who we quickly realized was Jack. He was conscious but disoriented, 
his eyes wide with fear as he recounted his harrowing ordeal. According to Jack, he had been trailing behind the group when he heard a strange noise emanating from the underbrush. Curiosity getting the better of him, he had ventured off the trail to investigate, only to stumble upon a hidden ravine obscured by dense foliage. As he peered over the edge, Jack claimed he had seen something lurking in the shadows, a shadowy figure with glowing eyes that seemed to pierce through the darkness. Before he could react, he felt a sharp blow to the back of his head and lost consciousness, only to awaken in the clearing where we found him. Fear rippled through our group as we listened to Jack's account, the realization dawning upon us that we were not alone in the wilderness. With trembling hands, we helped Jack to his feet and resolved to find our way back to safety, determined to put the nightmare behind us. As we retraced our steps through the darkened forest, the sense of foreboding hung heavy in the air, each rustle of the leaves and snap of twigs sending a cold feeling down our backs. The moon cast eerie shadows upon the forest floor and the distant howl of a lone wolf echoed through the night, adding to our sense of unease. Hours passed in agonizing silence as we navigated the treacherous terrain, our nerves frayed and our bodies weary from the ordeal. Just when it seemed that we were hopelessly lost, we stumbled upon the familiar sight of the trailhead, bathed in the soft glow of dawn. Relief washed over us as we emerged from the depths of the forest, our spirits buoyed by the promise of safety and civilization. We exchanged weary smiles and words of encouragement, grateful to have survived the nightmarish ordeal that had unfolded in the wilderness. But as we made our way back to civilization, a lingering sense of dread gnawed at the edges of our consciousness, a reminder of the sinister forces that lurked in the shadows of the mountains. And though we tried to convince ourselves that it was just a trick of the mind, we couldn't shake the feeling that we had stumbled upon something far more sinister than we could have ever imagined. As we parted ways and returned to our respective lives, the memory of that fateful night lingered in the recesses of our minds, a haunting reminder of the dangers that lurked in the wilderness. And though we tried to bury it beneath the distractions of everyday life, we knew that we would never truly be able to escape the chilling truth of what had transpired on that ill-fated hike.